Hello, NAC fans. Welcome back. Um, hope everyone had a great weekend. Um, I know as basketball fans in general, um, it was a tough weekend, a uh, tough Sunday for those in the basketball community and, and from following, you know, social media and, and Twitter, um, you know, the events over the weekend had a big impact on a lot of people, um, not just coaches, um, not just basketball players, but just um, fans and families and dads, uh, especially those with daughters, um, sharing a lot of um, moments uh, over the weekend um, and, and even into the last couple of days. Um, and I know it's been tough, but, you know, hopefully uh, everyone continues to get better and everyone continues to appreciate those around them um, and being able to enjoy uh, each and every moment that they get. Um, you know, basketball, for those that listen to this, uh, basketball is very important to them um, and, and has played a big role in their lives um, and, and who they are as people, and, and hopefully they can continue to do that uh, through the sport of basketball and, and be able to share those moments and memories with um, families, friends, and, uh, you know, even players and, you know, more specifically those in the NAC um, being role models, uh, not just to their teammates and students on campus, but I guarantee that the young fans that attend NAC games uh, – certainly look up to those players um, out on the court. So hopefully everyone continues to get better um, through all the events, and, and hopefully this podcast can help in any sort of way. Um, but going back to last week's games, uh, a lot of exciting games uh, last week uh, with some big wins, um, some big individual performances. Uh, we'll start off with Aurora's game at Marion. Um, Aurora came back from a 13-point deficit at halftime uh, to leave uh, Fond du Lac with a 74-69 win over Marion. Uh, The Spartans were led by Will Rubes with 17, Bailey Vance with 12, and off the bench, Jarek Hotwagner with 11. Uh, Marion was paced by Justin Wilson with 15, Blake Pedron with 13, and off the bench, Hunter Schultz had 11, and Dylan Miner had 12. Um, Despite losing a close rebounding battle, the Spartans were able to score 12 second chance points. Um, Aurora also scored 22 points off of 19 Marion turnovers. On the evening, Aurora shot 40% from the field, 32% from the three-point line, and 71% from the free throw line. Marion shot a 49% from the field, 38% from the three-point line, and 75% from the free throw line. Another close battle in the knack. Um, Dominican traveled to Edgewood. Um, Edgewood took care of business at home with 86-76 win over the Stars. Um, big nights from two very important players for the Eagles. Um, ben Seafield with 24 points and Jake Nagus with 20 points and 10 rebounds. Um, Ryan Buss with 13 points and Matt Myers with 10 points and 9 rebounds. Um, Dominican was led by junior guard Luke McDermott with 19 um, Jackson Smith with 17, Tyler Guest with 13 points, and off the bench, Dylan Anderson with 13 as well. Uh, both teams took care of the basketball, not surprising uh, with their guard play for both teams, uh, combining for just 13 turnovers. Edgewood, uh, was, Edgewood won the rebounding battle 48-38. to uh, Free throws were a huge difference as well. Um, Edgewood shot 26 for 28 from the free throw line, while Dominican was just 19 of 29. Uh, Dominican on the evening shot 39% from field, 26% from the three-point line, and 66% from the free throw line. Edgewood shot 42% from the field, 30% from the three-point line, and 93% from the free throw line. In the battle of engineering schools, IIT traveled to MSOE, and MSOE came away with a big win, uh, 68-57 at home against IIT. Um, MSOE was led by Michael Petroff with 15 points, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists. Travis Ballard with 11, and off the bench, Josh Herzog with 15. Uh, Matt Kermsey was held to just 6 points, but found a way to contribute with 7 assists. IIT was led by Ahmad Muhammad with, fit, with 19 points, followed by Miles Curry with 15, and Milos Dujelic 
with 10 rebounds. Max Izataki was one of eight from the field for six points, uh, but continued to rebound the basketball with nine. MSOE held IIT to just 18 points in the paint, uh, considering the majority of scoring typically comes from inside between Max Izataki and Miles Curry. Uh, to hold them to just 18 points is is pretty good defense. Um, again, not much production from MI, from IIT bench, um, 25 to 9 in favor of MSOE. Um, on the evening, IIT shot 36% from the field, 32% from the three, and 65% from the free throw line. MSOE shot 53% from the field, 27% from the three-point line, and 78% from the free throw line. A close battle on the road. Um, CUC traveled to Benedictine. Uh, Benedictine held on for a 66-63 win. Uh, no surprise here. Uh, Benedictine led by Eric Grigo with 24 points and 12 rebounds, seven of which were offensive. Um, Nick Kosage with 17 points and Colin Merkel with the start with 10. A CUC was led by Rashawn Amos with 17 points, followed by Brent Hatton with 15 and Landon Gladney with 14. Uh, 15 offensive rebounds for Benedictine led to 15 second chance points. Uh, BU did win the rebounding battle 44 to 35. CUC shot 45% from the field, 35% from the three, and 50 from the free throw line. Benedictine shot 37% from the field, 23% from the three, and 64% from the free throw line. Lakeland traveled to Concordia, Wisconsin. Um, high scoring first half, 63 53 at halftime. Um, but Lakeland took care of business on the road, which doesn't happen very often at Concordia, Wisconsin. Uh, came away with a 109-87 win. Uh, Lakeland had four starters in double digits, led by Carlos Campos with 20. Um, Tony White with 18 points and six rebounds. Isaac Anderson with a double-double, 11 points, 11 rebounds. Trent Nickel with 12 points. And off the bench, Greg Barber with 15. Um, Jared Jers led the Falcons with 24 points and 12 assists. Uh, followed by Joey Zietlow with 17, and Brandon Keller with 14 points and 7 rebounds. Rockford traveled to Wisconsin Lutheran. Uh, Wisconsin Lutheran had a 6-point halftime lead uh, and came away with a 101-77 win over Rockford at home. Um, another big night uh, for senior guard Andrew Brudnick uh, with 37 points on 8 of 12 three, from 3. Um, Alex Van Crete with 14, Maddie Farner with 12 points and 7 rebounds, and off the bench, Drew Bernhagen with 12 points, 5 assists, and 0 turnovers. Uh, Rockford was paced by Brandon Emmerich and Nathaniel Shedd with 13 points each. Um, Gavante Shaw with a double-double, 10 points and 11 rebounds. Um, Jamar Rivera also chipped in with 10 as well. Um, Wisconsin Lutheran did set a school record, 18 three-pointers. Um, they had on 37 made field goals, they had 31 assists. Um, Rockford committed 18 turnovers. On the night, Rockford shot 49% from the field, 29% from three, 65% from the free throw line. Wisconsin Lutheran shot ridiculous from <laughs> at, at home. 54% uh, from the field, 55% from three, but 64% from the free throw line. And then on Friday, um, if for the NAC fans that might not know, um, the two Concordias, Concordia, Wisconsin, and Concordia, Chicago, um, host, it, it rotates every year. Uh, but them in Concordia, 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 Nebraska, and Concordia of Ann Arbor all host what they call is, is the Concordia Invitational Tournament, um, the CIT. This year it was at Concordia, Chicago. Um, so Friday's game was part of conference play. Um, Concordia, Wisconsin played Concordia, Chicago in the first round of the CIT. Um, CW o opened with a 106-74 win. Um, Joey Zelo led with 22 points uh, to lead the Falcons, followed by 20 points and 6 rebounds from Jordan Johnson. 17 on 5 of 8 three-point shooting from Camden Flowers. Jared Jers with 14 points and 8 assists. Brandon Keller chipped in with 10. Um, CUC was led by Landon Gladney with 20 points, followed by Rashawn Amos with 17. And off the bench, Charlie Reznikoff with 12 points and 5 rebounds. Um, CU Dub did win a rebounding battle 39-30 and a free throw battle 29-29. Um, 
or 19 of 23 for CU Dub, while just three of nine for Concordia Chicago. On the night, the Falcons shot 60% from the field, 45% from three, and 83% from the free throw line. Um, Concordia Chicago shot 47% from the field, 22% from the three point line, and 33% from the free throw line. Um, it is it is an interesting event. Um, I was able to watch it throughout the years um, because of live streaming. Um, the gym is just packed. Um, obviously, with Concordia, Wisconsin being so close um, to Concordia, Chicago, and you know they're able to travel well. Um, it's a huge event for not just the basketball programs because the women um, also participate as well. Um, but I know from talking to people that have played in it, um, talking to people around the event, uh, it, it's a big time event that the campus fully gets behind and involved. Uh, so if you get a chance, um, I haven't done so personally yet. It's something that I do want to take advantage of um, here within the next couple of years, you know, when it goes back to Concordia, Wisconsin, or, or comes back to Concordia, Chicago. Um, I was hoping to make it out this year, um, but wasn't able to do so. But it's something I do want to, to fully get the effect of because um, it, it does look like a cool event. Um, my younger brother was an assistant at Concordia, Chicago for two years, and, and he told me about the event and, and everything that goes on with it. Um, and it seems like a great event, um, you know, just from the atmosphere-wise. It uh, looks like a lot of fun that, that as a basketball player you want to you want to take uh, you want to take in. Um, then on Saturday, um, mm-hmm. in the championship game, Concordia, Wisconsin fell to Concordia, Concordia Nebraska, ninety-two to fifty-five. Um, Jordan Johnson with thirteen points and seven rebounds to lead the Falcons. Brandon Keller with twelve points and off the bench, Ole Lake and George with eleven. Um, they were all rebounded, fifty-one to thirty-three. Um, all as well as being outscored in fast break points, nineteen to seven, and bench production, thirty-one to twenty-one. Uh, Concordia, Wisconsin shot 31% from the field, 19% from the three, and 67% from the free throw line. Joey Zietlow from Concordia, Wisconsin was named all-tournament team. Concordia, Chicago took on Concordia of Ann Arbor. Um, the Cougars fell at the buzzer 67-66. to uh, Rashawn Amos led the way with 18 points, followed by 16 from Landon Gladney. Um, bench production was in favor of Concordia of Ann Arbor, uh, 35 to 22, as well as fast break points, 22 to 9. Uh, Concordia of Ann Arbor was held to 38 percent from the field, 27 percent from three, and 71 percent from the free throw line. Concordia of Chicago shot 41 percent from the field, 17 percent from the three point line, and 71 percent from the free throw line. I believe Rashawn Amos was named All CIT team. Marion traveled to Lakeland. Uh, Lakeland won their second game in a row with a 95-59 win over Marion. Uh, Jagan Begeese with another big game, 16 points and seven assists. Off the bench, Tylen Huff with 16 and Eric Jordan with 13. Uh, Marion was led by DeAndre Ross, who came off the bench for 17 points. Lakeland did force 20 turnovers, which led to 30 points um, off of those turnovers compared to just 13 points off of 10 Lakeland turnovers. Uh, Marion shot 34% from the field, 30% from the three, and 69% from the free throw line. Lakeland shot 52% from the field, 39% from the three, and 72% from the free throw line. Benedictine continuing their hot play. Um, got a big win on Saturday, 76-67 to on the road at Dominican. Um, Eric Grigo with another big game, another double-double, um, 13 points and 10 rebounds on 5 of 7 shooting. Um, Nick Kosage led the way for the Eagles with 20 points. Um, Colin Murgle with the start and didn't, did not disappoint with 15 points. Off the bench, Cade Ellington with 10. Uh, Dominican got a double-double from Tyler Guest with 15 points and 10 rebounds. Luke McDermott continued his high shooting with five with 15 points on five of eight sh- shooting from the three-point line. Um, Jackson Smith continued his strong play as well with 17 points, followed by 10 points from Dennis Handy. Handy. Um, Benedictine won the rebounding battle 35-29. to um, Strong three-point shooting was key for Benedictine as they shot 11 of 19 from three, while Dominican was just 8 of 26. 
Uh, free throws kept it close um, with Benedictine shooting just 13 of 27, but Dominican was 13 of 14. Um, Benedictine shot 53% from the field, 58% from the three, and 48% from the free throw line. Dominican shot Dominican shot 40% from the field, 31% from the three, and 93% from the free throw line. On in the afternoon game, um, Eric Grigo scored his 1,000th career points. Uh, so congratulations on that, Eric. Um, it's a great accomplishment, especially somebody who's been uh, such a productive player throughout his career so far in the NAC and has been a producer uh, since his freshman year, coming off the bench on a, on a really, really good NCAA tournament team. Uh, and he's been a great player and, and battled an injury uh, into last year and is playing great and leading his team this year. Um, Aurora traveled to Wisconsin Lutheran. Um, Wisco completes the sweep of Aurora with a 95-86 win. Um, no surprise here. Um, Andrew Brudnick continues his strong play with a career-high 38 points, uh, shooting 12 of 18 from the field, 4 for 4 from the three-point line, and 10 of 12 from the free throw line uh, to go along with nine rebounds. Not surprised by the numbers that he's put up in the last week. Not surprised by the numbers he's put up all season. Um, he's From conversations I've had with, with Coach Ruffing, uh, we talk probably once, twice a week, um, not too much in, in regards to his team, but uh, he's he's constantly uh, having to call me back or call me later because of he's in the gym with with Mr. Brudnick and and it's clearly paid off. Uh, Alex Andrew Wojcik with 12 points for Wisconsin Lutheran. Alex Van Crete with 13 and off the bench. Drew Bernhagen continued his strong play with 19 points. Aurora got a big game from Will Rubes with 22 points and 8 rebounds. Uh, Shamar Pumphrey, uh, the freshman, with 16 points, 5 rebounds, and 6 assists. Uh, Michael Finley with 14 points. Justin Wurzak with 10, and off the bench, Rashad Johnson with 12. Uh, Wisconsin Lutheran is able to force 17 Aurora turnovers and turn them into 20 points. Um, Aurora won the rebounding battle 39-32. and uh, Aurora shot 44% from the field, 45% from 3, and 82% from the free throw line. Uh, Wisconsin Luther shot 49% from the field, 39% from three, and 72% from the free throw line. Rockford got their first win at IIT since 2014 uh, with a 73-68 win. Uh, Rockford, again, led by another player that, that's put in a lot of time on his own outside of practice. Uh, he's, he's a hard worker, but Brandon Emmerich led the regions with 17 points on 6 of 10 shooting. Four of six from the three, two for two from the free throw line. Off the bench, Nathaniel Shedd and Addison Bodie uh, with 13 points apiece. Um, IIT was led by Milos Dugalik uh, with 20 points, followed by Ahmad Muhammad and Miles Curry both with 12. Max is attacking a strong second half with 11 points and eight rebounds. IIT did have a shot to tie it at the end, but came up just short. Uh, bench points were in favor of RU 34 to 8 14 first half turnovers for IIT uh, but much better in the second half and finished with 18 was able to cut the lead cut into the lead and take the lead in the second half as well um, Rockford shot 50 percent from the field 43 percent from three and 86 percent from the free throw line IIT shot 46 percent from the field 37 percent from the three-point line and 80 percent from the free throw line um, Edgewood traveled to MSOE. Um, MSOE got a big home win, 71-59 for the fifth straight win. Um, they were led by Matt Kermsey with 26 points and 6 rebounds on 10 of 13 shooting, 2 of 5 from the 3 and 4 for 4 from the free throw line, followed by 12 from Michael Petroff. 12 Red Raiders scored on the afternoon. Edgewood led by Jake Nagas with 16, a 39-28 rebounding advantage for MSOE. On the afternoon, Edgewood shot 39% from the field, 23% from the three, 70% from the free throw line. MSOE shot 51% from the field, 18% from the three, 75% from the free throw line. So a lot of big games last week, um, helping in the standings, teams moving up and down now, um, changing spots weekly. Um, 
going into this week's games, we got a uh, full slate of games tomorrow night, January 29th. Edgewood travels to Concordia, Chicago. Um, Concordia, Chicago right there uh, in the mix of things. Uh, currently 5-7, and seven, uh, sitting in 7th place right now. A, a win at Edgewood certainly helps them. Um, Edgewood still got a chance with how crazy things are, so a big one there. Uh, but again, you know, if you want to move up in the standings, you got you got to get some road wins and plenty of games left. Um, but Concordia Chicago playing well, um, you know, a, a tough weekend uh, going 0-2. But um, in their games last week, they still played really well. Uh, close one at Benedictine, uh, close one on Saturday against Concordia Van Arbor. Uh, so playing well. Uh, so big game there. Uh, Dominican travels to Concordia, Wisconsin. Again, never easy to go on the road, never easy to win at Concordia, Wisconsin. Um, but Dominican, again, playing well despite last week's um, 0-2 record. Um, you know, it's going to be a good game. IIT travels to Benedictine. Um, if we can figure out what's going on with IIT, I, I think that's a head-scratcher uh, all season. Um, but again, they're still it, it's a tough out. It, it's a tough beat. Um, great matchups, inside play. Um, with with Max Hizataki and, and Eric Grigo for you know for both teams there and, and obviously Miles Curry for IIT, um, but you know Benedictine is a well-rounded team getting production from a lot of different players, uh, so you can't just focus in on uh, one or two guys. Uh, Marion travels to Aurora. Uh, they had a close battle last week. Uh, Wisconsin Lutheran going on the road to Lakeland, another big one there. Um, Wisconsin Lutheran trying to hold pace uh, at at the top there in, in Lakeland. Um, right now in the six by six and six can can certainly help themselves out with the with the big win there. Um, and then on Saturday, um, February first, uh, Benedictine travels to Marion. Um, you know, don't overlook Marion at home. Tough out there. Um, tough to go on the road and, and win at Marion. Uh, you know, sometimes guys and teams start looking at, at records and and things like that but you know that's when things get interesting especially on the road edgewood traveling to iit both teams still looking to make a push for that conference tournament uh with for that you know one of those final spots aurora at lakeland wisconsin lutheran at dominican uh, msoe at concordia chicago and concordia wisconsin at rockford um, all of these games are, are big games this week uh, for a lot of different teams. You know, Benedictine, um, you know, if you look at the conference standings, uh, it's the way teams are placed right now, it, it's all based on overall records. Uh, but it really what the conference standings should say is Wisconsin Lutheran is the one in first place right now because they have the tiebreaker over Benedictine because of their head-to-head -head matchup. Um, then followed by that, you got CU Dub sitting in the three spot, uh, at nine and three. MSOE and Rockford both seven and five, uh, but MSOE does have the head-to-head -head, um, record right now, uh, one and zero oh, uh, over Rockford. Uh, but they play this week, and again, this is something that that can help you know differentiate some spots down the road. Uh, the Rockford MSOE game is a big one because Rockford can negate the the head-to-head -head matchup and then start going up um, in the tie-breaking process later on if things were to come to that um, when deciding their their spot in the conference tournament. Uh, so it, it's a big game for Rockford. It's a game where MSOE can can erase all all possible tiebreakers and, and same thing for Rockford. They can erase that um, and then just start moving on down the, the conference standings. Then you got Lakeland six and six. Um, they have this week. They got Wisconsin Lutheran at home, and then they got Aurora at home. So two big home games for the Muskies. Um, again, where they can start moving themselves up and down um, the conference standings as well. Uh, Concordia Chicago. Uh, they have MSOE at home on Saturday. They have Edgewood at home tomorrow night. Um, you know, right now, obviously, they are in the seven spot. Um, but two home games, and they're right back at seven and seven. Uh, and, and depending on the, how things shake out in other games throughout the conference, you know they could go from the seventh spot 
you know, potentially up into the fourth spot, you know, depending on how things go about in the rest of the conference, you know, going in on the outside looking in or they can start moving in and, and you know, we're, we're 12 games into the conference conference play uh, with eight left. Uh, so after this week, you got six games, three weeks, uh, not a lot of time, and, and things are still far from being figured out, um, as always, when it comes to conference play. Um, Dominican, Illinois Tech, Aurora, and Edgewood all sitting at 4-8. and eight. Um, All have big games this week, and if they take care of business, again, they could put themselves in a good position to make things really, really interesting um, to finish out these last four weeks. And then at the bottom, uh, you got Marion, who uh, who is currently 2-10, uh, but they, they have a, a big IIT win. Um, they just played Aurora tough last week, um, and, you know, they got Aurora again this week. They got Benedictine, um, you know, on the road at Aurora, at home against Benedictine. Uh, no easy games uh, when you when you're playing Marion because they're a team that plays extremely hard. Uh, they make things interesting. Um, they it seems like they've had a different guy step up for them uh, each and every night. So it's it's again it's what makes knack play exciting. It's makes it what makes it exciting for me now. Now that I don't have to try to figure out. Um, you know what's going to happen or, or what we have to do to to be in the conference tournament um, and those kind of things as, as a knack fan it's what make it exciting um, as a knack coach and, and as a knack player you know you just can't worry about it don't worry about the standings just take care of business take care of your team and what you can do and if you handle business everything else will take care of itself so big games this week as always Check it out. You can go to each each team's uh, athletic homepage, go to their schedule. You can live stream it. Uh, you can check out live stats. Um, a lot of teams are now adding uh, some voice uh, to their live streams, uh, which as a fan, I greatly appreciate because you get a lot of insight uh, to a lot of different things. But it's also fun to watch. You know, it, it, Each one of these players grew up wanting to play Division One. Um, they're getting the opportunity to Division Three, and they're getting the same attention from their athletic departments um, when it comes to things like this. And fans who do watch the live streamings appreciate it. You know, they don't want to listen to just a quiet uh, game. Uh, they want to feel like they're there and involved. And a lot of these announcers and color guys uh, do a great job of that. Uh, so continue to do that. Um, I know it's it's great and it's fun to watch and it's what makes it exciting. Um, but I always appreciate all the fans that, that do listen to this. Um, I appreciate it and it's it's been fun. And, you know, I, I miss the knack. I miss the coaches. I miss the players. Um, but still get a chance to be around it and I'm still involved in, in a small way uh, to, to help uh, grow the recognition of this conference uh, as much as I possibly can. So, Enjoy it, appreciate it, and have a great night.